Qualitative analysis is a branch of chemistry that deals with the identification of elements or groups of elements present in a sample. The procedure usually followed is based on the principle of treating the solution with a succession of reagents so that each reagent separates a group of constituents. One problem learners generally face with learning qualitative analysis is the ability to recall the color of the cation and also to recall if that cation is soluble or not. In this video, I will show you memory tips you can use to recall easily the color of a cation and also recall if that cation is soluble or not in a test solution. In this edition, we will be looking at identification of cations only, that is positive ions. Examples of cations that we'll be looking at here are aluminium, calcium, lead, zinc, ammonium, copper, ion 3, and ion 2. The two successive reagents we'll be using here and in this particular order are sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide. Please note that in this test process, the two reagents we are using here will be in this particular order. Number one is sodium hydroxide and number two is ammonium hydroxide. Now, this is paramount because if we change the order of this reagent, then our memory tips and recall formula will no longer be valid. So make sure that this is the order that you follow if you want our memory tips and recall tips to work. So our first test solution contains aluminium. Our first test solution contains aluminium. As you can see here, aluminium is indicated by Al3+. It means that the solution that we're going to test for now contains aluminium ion. So the first thing we're going to do, just like I told you earlier, is that we're going to add sodium hydroxide in drop, and then we're going to add it in excess. After that, we're going to use ammonium hydroxide solution in drop, and also ammonium hydroxide solution in excess. And then we're going to talk about the memory tip. So the first thing we're going to do here is to add sodium hydroxide in drop. When you add sodium hydroxide in drop to a solution containing aluminium, you will get a white precipitate. A white precipitate will be formed. That is in drop. Now, if you add it in excess, you will get a white precipitate also. But this time around, this white precipitate is soluble in excess of the sodium hydroxide. Please note that the white precipitate here is soluble in excess of the sodium hydroxide. So that's all with the test for sodium hydroxide. Now we're moving to ammonium hydroxide. Effect of adding aqueous ammonia solution, that's ammonium hydroxide, in drop on a solution containing aluminium also forms a white precipitate. Okay, a white precipitate is formed. Now we're going to add effect of adding aqueous ammonia solution in excess now We've added it in drop, we got a white precipitate. Now we add it in excess. The white PPT, please note, the white PPT in excess of ammonia solution is insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. So here we have white PPT insoluble. Now let's pay attention to the memory recall. Now you have ALSIN. AL here stands for aluminium. Now the first S that you see here stands for soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. And then the IN stands for insoluble in excess of ammonia solution. Okay, we now have, um, you can pronounce it as alcine or I don't know how to pronounce but it's A-L-S-I-N, alcine. Maybe that's the right pronunciation, alcin. So if you can pronounce alcin, 
obviously you have you've already had a memory recall to this test process for aluminium a solution containing aluminium and which is a white precipitate it is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and insoluble in excess of ammonia solution let's go to the next test solution now the next test solution is calcium calcium so just like we did in the first test we we'll first add sodium hydroxide in drop and then you add it in excess and then you move to ammonium solution now when you add sodium hydroxide to a test solution containing calcium a white precipitate is formed but when you add it in excess the first time was in drop when you add it in excess white precipitate is insoluble in excess of the sodium hydroxide if you add it in drop you get first you get white precipitate but when you add it in excess white precipitate it is insoluble in excess of the sodium hydroxide that's all for sodium hydroxide now let's move to ammonium solution now when you add aqueous ammonia solution to a test solution containing calcium you will not see any visible reaction in drop you won't see any visible reaction and even in excess you will not see any visible reaction so the reaction will just remain as it is you won't see anything now let's look at the memory recall chip formula here you have c a i n and then two hyphen okay um you can it can be pronounced as cane cane if you can recall cane it means that you have a memory chip to recalling this um, test process already calcium c a stands for calcium and this i n stands for uh, insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide now these two hyphen point to the fact that in ammonia solution no visible reaction no visible reaction so obviously if you can write k down you will already have a memory recall tip to recalling this test process calcium is already a white precipitate you know that the white precipitate already so let's move to the next test solution the next test solution is lead when you add a solution containing lead to sodium hydroxide you get a white precipitate and when you add it in excess the white precipitate is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide now let's move to ammonia solution when you add a solution containing lead to ammonia solution a white precipitate is also formed but this time around the white precipitate is insoluble in excess of ammonia solution now let's look at the memory recall chip now lead which is which is a symbol for for pb sorry which is a symbol pb which is a symbol for lead is a white precipitate where well, we already know that and SES stand for soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and the IN stand for insoluble in excess of ammonia solution okay um, if you can write this down PBSIN you can pronounce it lead or whatever you want to pronounce it but it obviously give you a memory tip or recall to this test process here in which lead is involved is a white precipitate soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide so let's move to the next test reagent now the next test reagent is zinc 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 as we can see from here um, effect of adding aqueous sodium hydroxide solution in drop you get a white precipitate and when you put it in excess the, the white precipitate becomes soluble in excess sodium hydroxide now when you use ammonia solution you also get a white precipitate and this time around also the white precipitate is soluble in excess of ammonia solution and now let's look at the memory recall tip you have zn which stands for zinc and then you have s which stands for soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide another s also stands for soluble in excess of 
ammonia solution. Simple and straightforward. So if you can write ZNSS, you've already had a memory tip to recalling um, this test process of zinc using sodium hydroxide and ammonia solution to test for um, the, the element zinc soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and soluble in excess of ammonia solution. Let's go to the next test reagent. The next test reagent is ammonium ion. Ammonium ion. Here, there is a very strange reaction. Here, effect of adding aqueous sodium hydroxide to any ammonia solution, no PPT is formed. No PPT is formed. But when you heat it, when heated with sodium hydroxide solution, ammonia gas is evolved. When heated, ammonia gas is involved but when you add sodium hydroxide to ammonia solution there is no ppt no precipitate is formed but when you heat it slightly ammonia gas will be evolved effect of adding sodium hydroxide in excess no precipitate is formed the same thing goes with um, ammonium solution in excess and in drop no ppt is formed and in excess no ppt is formed so here there is no visible reaction nothing is formed so if you are performing a, a test and you notice that after adding sodium hydroxide in drop and in excess nothing is formed you add ammonia solution nothing formed then you begin to suspect that test solution to be ammonium ion or ammonium solution let's go to the next test solution now all right our next text solution contain copper 2 ion copper 2 ion here yeah. uh, we've uh, we finished with um white precipitate now we're moving to colored precipitate and the first one here is copper 2 ion now when you add um sodium hydroxide solution to a test solution containing copper 2 ion a blue precipitate is formed a blue precipitate is formed and when you add excess of sodium hydroxide to a test solution containing copper 2 ion, the blue precipitate is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. So that's all for sodium, sodium hydroxide. Let's move to ammonium hydroxide. When you add aqueous ammonium hydroxide to a solution containing copper 2 ion, it also forms a blue precipitate. A blue precipitate is formed. Now let's add it in excess and see what happens. In excess of it, the blue precipitate will be soluble. The blue precipitate will be soluble in excess of ammonia solution. Now let's look at the memory recall symbol. You have C-U-I-E-N-S. C-U-I-E-N-S. Now it's here reads that this is copper and obviously copper has a blue precipitate. Just write it down at the back of your mind that copper has a blue precipitate and it is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. Okay, now let's move to the next ion. Let's move to the next um, test solution now. The next test solution is ion 2. Ion 2. And obviously, as you can see here, the precipitate that will be formed here, the color of the precipitate that will be formed here is green, green color. So if you add, if you add aqueous ammonium solution, a drop to a solution, a test solution containing IO2, a green precipitate is formed. And when you add it in excess, the green precipitate is insoluble in excess of the sodium hydroxide. Now, when you use ammonium solution, ammonium solution, green precipitate is also formed, but also the green precipitate is insoluble in excess of ammonium solution. And else, let's look at the memory recall tip now. The memory recall tip says Fe2+, plus, that is ion 2, and obviously you have to learn that this ion is green, is green in color, and it is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and insoluble in excess of ammonia solution and so that's account for this in square meaning 
is insoluble in both reagent. It means that it is insoluble in both reagent. In excess, it is insoluble in excess of both reagent. So this is what the square here designate designate insoluble in both reagent. And obviously, the color of the precipitate in this test solution is green. Copper is blue. Ion 2 is green. Let's move to the next test solution. Right, the next test solution is Ion 3. Ion 3, that is the color of rust. This one reminds me, how do I sometimes remember the color of this ion? This color of rust metal, rust metal is one way by which you can remember. Of course, Ion 3, Ion 3, is the color of rust metal. So effect of adding aqueous solution to test solution containing sodium hydroxide, a reddish brown, a reddish brown pre precipitate is formed. The reddish brown precipitate is formed. Now the reddish brown precipitate is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. In case of ammonium hydroxide or ammonia solution, the reddish brown precipitate is also formed, but the reddish brown is also insoluble in excess of the ammonia solution. And that accounts for why we have Fe3 plus here, which is the symbol of ion 3, and here we have In square, meaning this test solution is the precipitate formed in this test solution is insoluble in both reagents. This reagent are sodium hydroxide and ammonia solution. All right, here I have a summary of all what I have done. Um, as you can see here, we have aluminum, you have calcium, you have lead, you have zinc. For aluminum, you, ha you have it as alcine, that is aluminum, a white precipitate soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and insoluble in excess of ammonia solution. You have Ca, which stands for calcium. You have In, which stands for insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. And in ammonia solution, this hyphen stands for no visible reaction. Lead, BB stands for lead. S stands for soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. And In stands for insoluble in excess of ammonia solution. Zinc. White precipitates, soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide, soluble in excess of ammonia solution. And all these salt here, that is aluminum, calcium, lead, zinc, all of them are white precipitates. All of them form white precipitate. Now for ammonium, no visible reaction. No visible reaction. Copper 2 ion will form a blue precipitate. It will form a blue pre a precipitate insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and soluble in excess of ammonia solution. Ion 3, brown PPT is formed. Brown PPT is formed insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and also insoluble in excess of ammonia solution. Ion 2 is a green precipitate insoluble in excess of ammonia solution and insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. So this is a summary of what we have done above. So thank you very much for watching and God bless you. I hope this will help you to pass your exams. I wish you good luck in all your chemistry examinations. Thank you very much for watching and God bless you.